All right, everybody. Today, I'm really excited to tell you about a fantastic math book, a book I've been meaning to talk about for a while. It is my recommendation for how to get started in the subject of abstract algebra. It is Galois Theory by Harold M. Edwards. Now, I can already hear the shouting of my detractors. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is a very unique book, uh, a very different book from a regular treatment of this subject and the subject of algebra generally. And I understand it is one thing for me to tell you about what I think is great about this book and to recommend it. It's altogether another thing for me to suggest this is where students ought to get their start in the subject of algebra. And I really am saying, even to professors and people who sit on curriculum committees, I think there is something very seriously wrong with the standard way that abstract algebra is taught to math majors. I think students are being done a real disservice with the standard groups, rings, and fields approach. I think you could begin with a course uh, taught along the lines of this book, and it would be a much better approach to algebra. It's maybe not the only way of doing it, but it is a very good way of doing it. Let me start with three things you might notice about this book right off the bat. First of all, it is not a very thick book. This is not one of those giant tomes of algebra. This is a very manageable book that you can actually read start to finish. And an instructor could cover this entire book in a semester, uh, probably with some time left over for additional topics. Second, this book belongs to Springer's Graduate Texts in Mathematics series. But it is not just for graduate students. I'm going to tell you why I think this book is not only appropriate, but it's actually my preferred way to get started. So don't worry about that at all. It's just the series to which this book belongs. All it amounts to is uh, not my favorite typesetting, but uh, that's fine. And the third thing is that this book is not called Abstract Algebra, Modern Algebra, Higher Algebra. It's called Galois Theory. A Galois Theory is a theory that relates the solutions of polynomials to this hidden symmetries that their roots possess. It is named in honor of Evariste Galois, who developed this whole theory completely on his own and was never recognized for it in his short life. He was killed in a duel at age 20, very tragically, but people came to recognize the importance of his work afterwards, and it is the foundation of a lot of modern algebra. But you may know that Galois theory is typically taught in a second semester of undergraduate abstract algebra, if it is covered at all. And so why am I saying this is the book to get started and not a book which actually has algebra in the title? And the answer, uh, you can start to get a sense of the answer if you read, what is this book about? On the back it says, this book is an introduction to Galois theory along the lines of Galois' actual memoir, and he talks about the antecedents of Galois theory, uh, these names Gauss, Lagrange, Vandermond, Newton, even back to the ancient Babylonians, are explained to put Galois' main ideas in their historical setting, and that is uh, the main crux of it. One of the things that makes this book special is this is a historically-minded treatment of this subject, and if you pay attention to this channel, you know that is an approach that I really like. It's not just because I like history, but it's because this is how I like to understand math, and I'm going to try to tell you why I think this is a very concrete and good way of understanding the subject, but at least you can see if he starts all the way back the ancient Babylonians and works his way forward through history, how could this possibly be something that comes later, it comes only as you're a graduate student. All of this material in this book came well before the theory was rewritten in the way that you will see in most other algebra textbooks. And this is something great. Uh, that's true of a lot of the books of this uh, fantastic author, uh, Harold M. Edwards. What are the prerequisites for this book? Actually, in terms of content, the prerequisites are pretty minimal. Really, uh, high school algebra and, you know, having some curiosity about if you know how to solve quadratic equations, uh, what happens for higher degree. But as Edward says in the preface, uh, he has assumed a certain degree of mathematical experience. Uh, you need to be able to compute. You need to be able to give an argument. And so, although this book doesn't actually require a whole lot of content knowledge, uh, it doesn't make it easy, uh, but it is manageable. All right, so let's look at uh, the content of this book. So the first thing you'll notice is that the book doesn't actually have 
chapters. It is arranged in terms of sections, each of which is very short and usually contains just one idea. But the sections are grouped together in a way that they end in an exercise set. So there are eight exercise sets in the book. So you may hear me refer to these as chapters. The only difference is that these chapters are not modular. You really have to go from start to finish. The first 30 sections are algebra before Galois and up to Galois. So in the beginning, uh, there are some historical remarks. There is the solution of quadratic equations, even uh, from the time of the Babylonians. From there, you have to go to the 16th century, and he describes the methods of solution of the cubic, and then the solution of the quartic, and what people tried on the quintic, and how those same methods didn't seem to work. And then you get into the first key technique that will be used throughout the book, these expressions in terms of symmetric polynomials. The second chapter is about uh, the work of Lagrange and Vandermond. This is already 200 years after Cardano, with their own way of trying to work out what was going on in those earlier methods could they generalize? And then there is a chapter on cyclotomic equations, uh, the roots of unity. Uh, can you write the roots of unity in terms of radicals? And this is mostly work of Gauss. The cyclotomic equations play a central role in the theory in this book because if you're interested in can you uh, solve an equation by radicals, it's assumed you can uh, include roots of unity in that solution. And then there is this discussion of Lagrange's idea of a what's something called a resolvent and Galois' resolvent. This is what begins the Galois part of this book. And the rest of the book is pretty much uh, a kind of expanded explanation or commentary on Galois' paper, the revolutionary paper that he wrote and was still adding to the night before he died. Really great general theorems here uh, about uh, constructing simple algebraic extensions. How do you know that there is a root Anyway, uh, this is the beginning of Galois' work. And then these chapters 5 and 6 may be the heart of the matter here. There is the introduction of the idea of a group, which you could say is due to Galois. You'll see Galois' idea of a group is not exactly what we think of as a group today, but it captures the key idea because in the sixth chapter you can see if an equation is solvable by radicals, then there's some interesting structure to its Galois group. When you reduce, that group is normal. And that was the key thing that Galois discovered. Now, this seventh chapter is really interesting um, on splitting fields. This is a somewhat philosophically minded chapter. Edwards makes the case that for the foundations of this theory, you would need to know, well, what, what tells you that there exist uh, roots in the, in the first place? How do you know when you have a theory about permuting roots? Well, what is it that you're talking about? And he argues that the fundamental theorem of algebra due to Gauss, that every polynomial over the complex numbers splits over the complex numbers, is not really the right foundation for this theory for a couple of reasons. Actually, it has to do with algebraic constructions of a splitting field, and that has to do with the theorem that was proven earlier that constructs simple algebraic extensions and having a factorization method for field extensions. So this is a really interesting addition to the theory. It's something I hadn't really thought about in this way. It's good material. This is the only material in the book that actually comes from after Galois. This is a few decades later. And then the final chapter of the book this review of Galois theory is about the, the fundamental theorem. The, the fundamental relationship in Galois theory is this correspondence between the subfields of an extension and the subgroups of the Galois group that fix them. And then this, this correspondence is used to address some of the other issues in the book and this issue of solvable equations of prime degree, which was in Galois' original memoir, maybe a little bit esoteric, but uh, also it fills in the proof of uh, this lemma too, which was part of the theory of cyclotomic equations. So everything is uh, all wrapped up very nicely and neatly at the end of this book. And then uh, there are three appendices, and the first one is Galois' actual memoir. So you can see, uh, here is Edwards' translation. This is what Galois actually wrote. 
And it's really fascinating. Um, well, it is difficult uh, for a modern audience to read. You can see why you need this whole book to make sense of this. But you can see such a thing like uh, here in Proposition 2, here is how the idea of a normal subgroup these groups will have the remarkable property that one will pass from one to the other and applying the same substitution of letters to all the permutations of the first. What does that mean? Well, in the text, here, uh, Edwards explains, uh, this is what Galois meant by that, and this is the discovery of the key property of normal subgroups. Uh, that's just a really interesting historical thing to have there. Um, uh, but then it's really nice to have this uh, synopsis and uh, some material on groups that sort of ties the, this material together and puts it in maybe a more standard formulation than what is in the rest of the book. Just a really solid course on Galois theory. So <laughs> there are uh, lots of really good exercises in this book. What do I mean by good exercises? They are good in the sense that they are worthy results, and they typically involve a, a good practice in the techniques of the theory, so you really learn the theory by doing them. Exercises are a very good mix of computational problems and uh, theoretical ones. My one issue with these exercises, and I did a bunch of them before this review, is that a few of them, and there's no warning which ones, uh, a few of them are quite hard in the sense that um, they go beyond the methods demonstrated in the text, or they are quite involved and the answers are, are very long, and I'll just point out a couple of them. Uh, so, for example, uh, it is left uh, completely as an exercise to the reader to prove that uh, every prime has a primitive root. This is such an important theorem, and of course you should prove it, and the methods go a little bit maybe beyond what's in the book to do it, and I'll mention two other really important exercises as well. Uh, here uh, you are asked in these two exercises to essentially give the connection between Galois' method of solving equations to the earlier methods, and that's really important, but uh, you will see the answers are quite long. But that's the other thing about these, this book. There are answers to all of the exercises, which is really incredible to see in a book. And fortunately, uh, so it's really nice to have, especially for the computational ones and for the more theoretical ones, it's really more like a hint, a uh, generalized outline. It doesn't invalidate the use of this book for student exercises. And this book has another feature, which I've actually never seen in a book before. This is really something here. <laughs> it has this feature, list of exercises. And what is it? This is, I, I imagine this must be for an instructor. It actually, uh, so that you don't have to read the exercises, it gives a description of every exercise, what it's getting at. <laughs> so an instructor can know maybe which ones to assign. You know, this one has to do with the uh, construction of a regular pentagon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've never seen this before, as I said, uh, but that's really convenient. What may not be apparent if you are not already uh, a mathematician, if you're not an expert, this is a very, very different treatment of this subject. It's a different treatment of Galois theory, and certainly it's a different approach to the whole subject of algebra in many ways. In some simple ways, first of all, uh, there is some non-standard terminology in this book, the, the terminology of Galois resolvent, Galois' original definition of a group, it's not what you will find in other books, and that is an issue, although Edwards does eventually connect it to a more standard notions. And, of course, you will notice if you look at the text, there is a lot of text in this book. It is not just definition theorem proof. There is uh, a lot of written out. It's more written like a lecture. In part, this is a matter of style, and in part... Uh, this is because the book takes uh, a problem-solving approach to mathematics as opposed to a theory-building approach. The standard approach to algebra is to introduce students to the various abstract structures that the theory is built on, and you will learn in the abstract a theory of groups, a theory of rings, and a theory of fields. And that is not the approach in this book. This book takes the approach of what is the story? There's, there's a constant through line in this book of the problem at hand is to solve 
polynomial equations, a certain kind of polynomial equation, and you just do whatever you have to do in order to solve it. So that is why, for example, when the issue becomes constructing a simple algebraic extension, the text makes clear what is the problem at hand, what you would have to do as you work through the problem, and you need to deal with some critical distinction, that's when the distinction is introduced. Uh, so issues about rings and fields that you would learn, uh, it take a whole semester to learn abstractly on their own and maybe not know why they're important. Well, when they become important in the course of this book, that's when they're introduced. So here you see the Euclidean algorithm being introduced when he wants to prove this theorem on simple algebraic extensions. Clearly, I prefer this problem-solving approach. I find it much more concrete, far more motivated, and it is how mathematics was actually done. If you go through a regular course on algebra and then Galois theory, it will probably be a complete mystery to you how this teenager came up with this whole theory and, and revolutionized the whole subject. But if you read this book, you will learn the subject in a way that makes me say, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it'll be very clear why you are doing what you are doing. And the emphasis is on techniques rather than remembering definitions. This is not how I learned the subject. I learned the subject from a bunch of other much more standard books. And I really wish I had discovered this earlier, but I love this book now. Where do you go after this book? This does not really replace a full year of algebra. Uh, it does not cover everything. It does not cover, for example, some of the structure theorems of finite groups or the CELO theorems, that sort of thing, which is often covered in a first semester in algebra. But I think after this book, now you actually have a reason to study these objects. And so there are lots of different directions you can go after this book, even with a more standard text. I will talk about some other good algebra books later. Now, this book was actually originally intended as he says in the preface, as just a section of his other book, Fermat's Last Theorem, A Genetic Approach to Algebraic Number Theory. And that is a fantastic follow-up for people who are interested in number theory, which you can read after this book. Other directions might be in the direction of representation theory and matrix groups. I hope this kind of discussion about books is helpful to you. Uh, I've provided some links in the description. If you want to learn more about the history of algebra, there is a great book by van der Verden, History of Algebra, and that goes into some things that are not discussed in this book. For example, Abel's Proof of the Insolubility of the Quintic, which actually came before Galois' explanation and uh, the work of Ruffini as well. It's hard to actually learn math from uh, a book that's really about the history of math. Either there's too much history or it's intended for experts, but Harold M. Edwards has done the math world a great service by writing these books that are really intended for students and contain a motivated historical presentation. The whole book is actually infused with an attitude of setting the record straight, a kind of zeal uh, both for the real way that things are done and making it concrete and exposing the absurdity of the philosophy of the uh, Bourbaki, growth and deep group that has written this kind of revisionist mathematics and these highly general abstract texts and thinks that if you only studied things in the appropriate generality, then the solutions would pop out. Of course, this book shows that's not how it happened at all, certainly with the in the case of this subject. And I think uh, this book can teach a lot of people a lot of algebra that is uh, very hard or obscure if you try to do it a different way. All right. Thanks a lot.